Thank you very much uh, for uh, inviting me to give uh, the keynote speech about uh, a topic that is uh, widely discussed uh, the last uh, few years, and this topic is uh, the mobility as a service. Since uh, we live in uh, the digital area, uh, before I start, uh, we have a Facebook page, and uh, if you want to post, please use the itbr2018.org. And if you want to tweet, uh, hashtag IATBR2018. And also for this presentation, you can also uh, use uh, MassLab's um, uh, Twitter. And this may also contribute to travel behavior uh, genome, okay? To Bilal's uh, research. Okay, so I will start with um, a, a brief uh, a description of what happens uh, the last uh, years. So in uh, the past, the priority was um, allocated on uh, building uh, infrastructure, transport infrastructure, uh, roads, and especially on increasing road capacity. Uh, transport infrastructure is uh, very useful, and of course we need this, uh, but uh, it also has a side effect because as uh, road capacity is increasing, the same happens with uh, car ownership, and uh, we have uh, several um, uh, impacts on uh, environment, on our quality of life, uh, etc. More recently, uh, one of the priorities is uh, the expansion of uh, the public transport system, or uh, mass transit uh, as it is called in uh, the US. And public transport is considered almost um, a public good, so all citizens should have access to this, and in order to achieve this, usually public transport sh should have an extensive coverage. But uh, this costs a lot of money, and uh, sometimes the public transport uh, supply does not meet the demand. And uh, this goes both sides. Uh, and especially in the demand side, you can see uh, several public transport modes usually uh, run empty with uh, no passengers or just with a few passengers just because uh, you have to cover to serve an area, but the demand is very low. And uh, with public transport system, we also have several challenges with uh, first and last uh, mile. And uh, in most cities, we also have inconsistencies in uh, timetables. We have uh, different tickets, different pricing policies. So although uh, public transport is uh, very uh, useful uh, for all of us and for the cities, there are still some things uh, that uh, need uh, improvement. Uh, in uh, the meanwhile, we have uh, a lot of changes in the transport sector. And uh, as they may many uh, say, transport has been hit by a digital tsunami. And uh, this uh, digital tsunami uh, has brought a lot of new mobility technologies and new mobility services, uh, two different things. In terms of new mobility technologies, we have uh, improved internal combustion engines, uh, electrification, electric vehicles, vehicle to grid, connectedness, autonomous vehicles, even flying vehicles and uh, drones, and uh, of course, the data processing. It's not a mobility per se technology, but it is something that has helped a lot the transport sector. And uh, do you think that something is missing from this uh, list? It's something that all of you have. I'm sure you have it in your pockets, or you take pictures, or uh, if you are bored uh, with my presentation, you may serve the web. So what is the technology that it may be not mobility, but it helped a lot the transport sector? And this technology is smartphones. And uh, many of them say that uh, smartphones are uh, the biggest innovation in the transport sector in the last 10 years. And think of yourself 10 years ago without a smartphone. 
how easy it was to find travel information to access transport modes. So smartphones has changed a lot the way we travel. And smartphones, data processing, and uh, Internet of Things have also provided the opportunity for the development of several of new mobility services. Such uh, new mobility services are car clubs, as we say them in uh, the UK, but uh, it is car sharing actually, uh, ride sharing or uh, carpooling, ride hailing or peer-to-peer -peer taxi, peer-to-peer -peer car rental, and bike sharing are only few of the new mobility services. And you can see some examples, uh, some companies. Um, this is uh, from uh, London, the new mobility services that we have available in uh, London. But look the first line, the first row of this table, and almost for each new mobility service, there are two names just to try to make sense. So ride hailing, peer-to-peer -peer taxi. So there is still some confusion about the definitions. And currently, the new mobility services and concepts present an opportunity to improve the efficiency of the transport system and um, bring together the public transport system with all these new mobility uh, services. But now, we have a lot of uh, transport mode alternatives, uh, public transport modes, uh, all these new mobility services, and uh, usually each one of these transport modes or uh, services uh, has its own uh, app, and you have to do a registration, etc. Then we have uh, the journey planners that are very helpful for us hanging around the city or especially when we travel to other cities. And uh, we have plenty of uh, journey planners that uh, usually offer the information in uh, different uh, ways. Some of them combine um, several transport modes. Uh, some of them just use public transport and uh, walk uh, as uh, egress and access mode and then private uh, vehicles. Um, and uh, then when it is to use uh, one of these uh, transport modes or even uh, if you're going to use more of these, uh, you have um, um, several options to pay and this is uh, based on what transport mode you are going to use. So if you're going to use uh, different transport modes, combination of modes, you, should, you usually have to use different payment and ticketing methods like uh, paper tickets, cash, uh, smart cards, PayPal, or uh, NFC uh, technologies. We have a lot of uh, advancements, but all these create a confusion to us because we have so many services. Each one of these is accessible via dif a different uh, interface and this happens because each transport or mobility service provider operates in silo. And silos uh, do not contribute to having a, an efficient and optimized uh, transport uh, system. And this is just an example of a smartphone with so many different mobility related apps and we don't know which one to use every time. So against this uh, background, we have um, the mobility as a service concept that uh, started about uh, four or five years ago. Uh, it started uh, from um, Europe. And with the concept of mobility as a service, we have a new player in uh, the transport market, the mass operator, that comes in between the supply side and the customers. So it is a new player that brings together all the offerings of the mobility service providers and provides this to the users as, a, as one product via a single interface. 
A mass operator usually has um, a, a platform that uh, offers multi-service journey planner, and I'm saying multi-service uh, because we need uh, to combine different services and transport modes, not uh, the typical uh, uh, journey planners that we currently have. Real-time information about uh, the transport modes, booking, payment, ticketing, and one user account to control everything. So within the mass uh, concept, we have information and planning integration, and also payment and ticketing integration. And uh, when we talk about the supply side, the mobility service providers, we do not just uh, call them transport operators as we usually do so far. We call them mobility service providers because we can include uh, more actors in the supply side. So, and these actors are, of course, the transport or mobility operators, actually those who provide the fleet, uh, the mobility supportive services, so some uh, services and infrastructure that uh, we use uh, while traveling, for example, electric vehicle infrastructure, parking, uh, tolls, uh, congestion charging, etc. But uh, thinking also ahead and especially uh, in the era where uh, we will have the autonomous vehicles and uh, we will not uh, need to drive our cars, we can also include more services like Wi-Fi, uh, movies, uh, music that could really advance our uh, travel uh, experience. And um, mobility as a service uh, could not only be uh, within the borders of a city or a metropolitan area, it could also work uh, from um, uh, city to city. So with mass, we can also achieve the roaming in transport. Uh, this is um, uh, already available with uh, the car sharing or uh, ride hailing uh, companies. You have just one app and uh, wherever you are around the world and uh, this uh, provider operates, you can use the service with just your, uh, the same um, uh, app. And uh, with uh, having this in uh, mind, uh, we try to provide uh, the definition for mobility as a service. It is uh, a, a new concept and uh, it involves a lot of aspects. So uh, it was uh, quite challenging to provide the definition, but uh, now we have a definition and uh, this is uh, that mobility as a service is a user-centric, intelligent mobility management and distribution system, system in which an integrator brings together offerings of multiple mobility service providers and provides end users access to them through a digital interface, allowing them to seamlessly plan and pay for mobility. Um, there is a difference uh, between uh, uh, Europe and uh, the US, as uh, Costas uh, mentioned. So, um, uh, in uh, Europe, uh, just car in uh, the US, uh, just car sharing or ride hailing, uh, uh, the last year has started considered as uh, mass. Uh, but uh, in Europe, mass is a concept that uh, uh, is quite broader and covers more aspects. And um, uh, for example, car sharing is a component of mass. Uh, the same with uh, ride hailing. Or mass is not just an app. Uh, or an intermodal journey planner is again a component of uh, mass. Uh, Elisabetta mentioned about uh, communication in our uh, sector. Uh, and based on uh, previous uh, chairs of um, the IATBR. So it is um, important for us to be able to speak many languages. 
for example, to be able to communicate with uh, the neuroscientists or with uh, the developers that have to develop all the technology that is needed for these services, because we are uh, usually those who will um, explain how this should be designed. But at the same time, it is also important for us to speak the same language if we want to move on with uh, the research. And uh, the term of uh, the definition of mass that uh, we have, uh, it is um, something that it does not exist so far in the transport sector, and it can really take the transport system one step further. Uh, the mass concept covers several topics that have been uh, extensively discussed in the transportation sector during the last decades, and uh, these concepts are uh, the integration, interconnectivity, optimization of the transport services, smart and seamless mobility and sustainability. It also includes concepts that have recently emerged via the Internet of Things and uh, sharing economy, and uh, mobility on demand, car sharing, uh, shared mobility, ride sharing, bike sharing, multimodal or intermodal journey planners are components or characteristics of the mass concept. And with the mass concept, we also have several new terms like the mass operator, the mass platform, the um, IT providers. This is not a new term, but it is a component of mass. Um, the mass products, uh, mass plans, uh, or mass packages, etc. And uh, this is uh, just an example of uh, mass products to understand what we mean with uh, products. So um, it is um, a, a way to bundle all the transport modes together and provide these to the customers as one service. And uh, this already exists in the telecommunication sector. You do not buy separately uh, voice or uh, data or uh, SMS. You just buy a plan and it has everything. And uh, in the future, uh, mass, the mass services could be our personal mobility assistance. They could provide us the right information and then they could advise us about the right transport modes to use based on our trip characteristics and, of course, our personal uh, needs. But uh, in order to achieve this uh, integration in uh, the transport, we should approach the transport sector as an ecosystem, not just silos. We have to have a, a holistic approach and study all together uh, in order to achieve this efficiency that uh, we are looking for for so many years. And uh, mass uh, is an ecosystem. So it starts with the mass operator, and uh, at this point it's uh, worthwhile to say that there is no need to uh, have only one mass operator. Uh, there, are, uh, there is space for several mass operators. It's like the telecommunication sector. You do not just have one uh, provider, you have several providers. And uh, you have uh, the uh, core business where you have the transport operators, the mobility service providers that provide actually uh, the, the fleet to the mass operator. Uh, then uh, you have uh, all the actors that provide the IT um, uh, solutions like uh, payment solutions, ticketing, uh, multi-service, and there is no need to reinvent the wheel. There are already so many options. The issue is how we can bring all these together. And uh, of course, in the outer layer of the ecosystem, we have uh, the regulators and the policy makers, uh, researchers and uh, universities. And at this stage, uh, policy makers and researchers may be, in this figure actually, they may be at the outer layer, but actually these part, these actors, the policy makers and the researchers, are the most important actors at this point, because they will provide all the enabling frameworks and insights that are required in order to enable this uh, concept. 
And uh, briefly, for what we need for um, uh, enabling uh, uh, mobility as a service, uh, we need uh, data and uh, APIs. So transport operators or mobility service providers, they should offer um, APIs, uh, application programming interfaces, to communicate uh, data uh, either across the transport operators or with the mass operators, and data about fixed routes, flexible routes, real-time vehicle positioning, um, real-time network conditions, ticketing, uh, journey booking, payment, and ticketing. And of course, if there are more data available in uh, the cities, we can offer even more personalized uh, um, products. And of course, at this point, we also need um, the policy makers uh, intervention, and uh, we need uh, standards and uh, policy frameworks about uh, open data and uh, data specification standards, e-ticketing, consumers and passenger rights, personal data protection, uh, fair market competition, safety and security, and of course, uh, the sustainability uh, in order to make sure that all the products and concepts that are developed within the mobility as a service meet the requirements and the objectives of uh, the cities. This was, um, the, in brief, the concept of uh, mobility as a service, and now it's time to move on to the research component. And uh, since this is a new concept, there is a lot of space uh, for uh, research. Uh, the main research areas is uh, business, customers and users, technology and data, and policies. And of course, to understand the impact. Uh, we have a project uh, funded uh, from uh, European Commission, and uh, we are uh, lucky because we can study all these uh, four um, uh, areas at the same time and understand how all this should be synchronized and harmonized in order to uh, achieve um, the perfect, let's say, uh, mass. And uh, from these four um, areas, I will focus mostly on uh, the business and uh, uh, end users and uh, policies. And um, the most important research question is what is the impact of mass or what could be the impact of uh, mass? In order to answer this, you have to uh, cover several topics because it is not just uh, one dimension. So we uh, have research questions about what mass products do citizens prefer. Uh, are they going to subscribe to such services, their willingness to subscribe, uh, combinations and the amount of uh, transport modes they will include in their mass products, willingness to pay. Uh, can we use uh, persuasive techniques or uh, extra incentives um, in order to attract them to use uh, mass products or to make them uh, use more green uh, transport options within these mass products? Uh, the most uh, important question, how mass may change travel behavior? How it will affect our long and short term travel decisions? Car, car ownership, uh, mode choice, departure arrival time, you can have your personal uh, mobility assistant. Will this change your travel patterns? And uh, then um, residential choice, residential location choice, or even um, active transport. At the same time, we should also uh, translate these findings into business cases, and uh, we should uh, be able to provide insights about uh, uh, the impact of uh, mass products on uh, the mobility service provider's market share and revenue. So what will happen if uh, the ride-hailing company A is under a mass operator? Will they have the opportunity to access a wider market to increase their market share? Uh, or for the small transport operators that do not have the resources to advertise or to build this technology in order to access a wider um, uh, market? 
uh, will they benefit out of this concept? Uh, then what commercial agreements uh, are needed between the mass operators and the mobility service providers uh, in order to secure uh, good prices, uh, data exchange, etc. And um, do we need or uh, can we offer some uh, incentives even to the supply side in order to participate in uh, such um, a concept? And then we have the public transport subsidization. Uh, they invest a lot of money. They provide, they subsidize um, the, the public transport system. And uh, this money usually are not wisely uh, spent. Can we shift the subsidization to the mass operator? Um, what mass business models shall we use in or, uh, develop in order to avoid monopoly? Uh, all these are some questions that need to be answered with, uh, in the following um, years. And in order to answer these kind of uh, questions, we need uh, models that um, uh, integrate the supply and the demand side, and uh, we usually need activity-based uh, models. We have to take into account the strategic, the tactical, and the operational level, how all these interact uh, in order to provide and quantify the impact and provide the performance indicators needed. Okay, this is a more detailed modeling framework about uh, mobility as a service. So in the strategic level, uh, we need um, um, subscription choice models, pro mass product choice models. Then on the tactical level, we have to check uh, if we will have any changes in uh, the daily activity patterns or uh, how um, the behavior, travel behavior may change uh, within the day the, when you receive real-time information. Uh, but of course, all these start from uh, the right side, as you can see, that is the mass market model. So we have to understand the concept of mass, the business models that uh, may be available, who is, for example, the mass operator and what are the object objective functions? Uh, is the mass operator a public transport authority? Is um, a transport uh, operator? Uh, is um, a new company or is a journey planner? So, and what are the objective functions of each one of these mass operator types? And the mass market model on the right side is the one that will help us then later on to move uh, in the modeling of the other uh, behaviors. And uh, I would like also to show something else on this figure. So there are um, some say that mass is uh, the fifth mode. Mass is a concept, it's not a transport mode. So we do not model this as an extra uh, alternative in our uh, mode choice set. Mass is about uh, the integration, about how we can bring all this together. And uh, just briefly, because I'm running out of time. OK, but you may get bored. Uh, so um, there are uh, a lot of aspects uh, that uh, research is needed, but uh, I will start. I will focus now uh, uh, only on the survey design because it is a new concept. We don't know how this will be. Uh, it is challenging to describe this to individuals that participate in our uh, surveys. Um, it is difficult to understand what prices you should use. We don't know what are the travel patterns of um, uh, individuals and uh, what is the amount of transport modes they use. Uh, we do not know or, or we know the pricing system of different transport operators, but how we can bring all this together and build just one package with one price? Each one uses different units. Uh, and um, there are several uh, challenges that uh, we face in uh, designing uh, the, serv uh, the, the service. And of course, I forgot to mention that because this is a new mobility service, uh, we need stated preference uh, experiments. 
So we usually use uh, two approaches uh, for uh, our um, uh, surveys. The one is uh, the smartphone-based uh, travel survey. So we use um, uh, tracking uh, apps uh, where we track the activities, the travel patterns, the trips of uh, the individuals. And um, we have done this in uh, London, Greater Manchester, Luxembourg, and uh, Budapest. And we do the tracking because we want to derive the mobility record. So we have some presentations in the following days about uh, these mobility records. So it is important to show to someone what is their tra current travel behavior in terms of distance, time, trips, uh, number of trips, and cost per mode in order to understand uh, what the potentials or the benefit or the added value of mass could be uh, to his um, uh, travel behavior. And once you have the mobility record, uh, because none of us knows how much we spend for transport or how many, uh, how much time we spend for transport, then once we see our mobility record, maybe it is easier for us to understand what mass products we need and if these mass products are um, the, right, uh, the right products uh, for us. Uh, then we have another um, approach because uh, the smartphone-based um, travel surveys uh, provide us really good uh, information and rich information, but unfortunately uh, we do not have that many participants. So we have to complement uh, this um, uh, surveys with uh, just online uh, questionnaires and it is again very challenging to describe what a mass service may look like. So we try to use um, uh, visualization, uh, nice uh, figures or even videos to try to explain what mass uh, services could be. And uh, here we have uh, just some um, uh, examples of uh, mass uh, products, stated preference experiments. So we play with uh, different um, approaches in order to understand what uh, citizens prefer at this early st uh, stage of uh, mass uh, products. So here is a combination of uh, pay as you go, weekly plan, monthly plan, and uh, the charging is based on the transport mode. Then another scenario, uh, these fixed uh, plans uh, with for different uh, flavors, for different uh, probably population groups. Then uh, we just um, use some extra incentives to understand if these have any effect on um, uh, consumers, on uh, the behavior, or even, so let's say this is uh, the carrot, we also use sticks, so what will happen if, for example, uh, the city imposes a congestion charging zone? Uh, build your own uh, plans, and um, even uh, mass plans uh, for, uh, uh, let's say, other, uh, it's not exactly population groups, mass plans for tourists. Uh, so all these are uh, concepts that uh, we try to uh, uh, explore uh, what are the preferences in order to advise uh, cities and the industry uh, um, what products are uh, can satisfy the objectives of uh, all the actors. And um, uh, at this point, uh, we, the travel behavior modelers, are the ones who are, who are going to provide uh, the insights to uh, policy makers, to the public sector, and uh, to industry in order this concept to be materialized. Thank you very much for uh, your attention. And uh, you can find more literature here.